We are now live, buddy. Hey, hey, everybody. John Harris really on. I'm bringing it back. Tonight's the first night. As uh, the boys in the band over there are really kicking it tonight. Nice going, guys. Different song from the Public Chomp. <laughs> <laughs> like there's really a band. Nobody's going to believe that. How stupid is that? Uh, I'm here with my pal, Billy Smith, and we are doing It's Showtime with John Harris, a sports special tonight. Um, and it is showing up, brother, that I am live on Facebook. We will see if we get comments or not. Uh, hopefully we will. So if you want to go ahead and share it to your folks, uh, if you see it, do you see it at all? On your end or no? Okay, because I show that I am live. So show in stream. Give me a second then and let's see maybe. Uh, let's see about now. There we go. There we go. Okay, there it is. Yep, I got a message to hit you. Hit a different button. Okay, so there you go. Uh, continue watching while you browse Facebook. I'm not going to browse Facebook. I just want to see what happens here. Um, oh, and it is showing up, brother, that I am live on Facebook. Oh, we'll I guess I got to okay. turn down some so volume there. here. All right. So you can still hear me, right? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. Okay, I got to turn up a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to have to put in a headset because otherwise, yeah. And yeah, on Facebook, I it is up on my side. So anybody that does comment, uh, we would see it. And I think we'll see it on this page as well so i have both screens up. i have a two screen system well <laughs> just for this system then i've got <laughs> the public john media buddy we got all kinds of stuff in here um uh camera went the wrong way <laughs> we got all kinds of stuff just uh the bastard's got to learn how to use some of it so there we go <laughs> Get so, used to that by now. We'll go from there. Uh, is that working for you? Because if not, I'll see if I can share it. No, I can hear you. I, I'm good. All right. And is it on your page? Uh, yes, I, page? I, I shared it. Yeah. Okay. Somebody liked it. I don't know who. Oh. All right. So we are on. And we are doing a sports special. I'm doing it with my pal, Billy Smith. We used to do some sports stuff all the time on the Public John. And so tonight we are going to uh, do our first sports special. It's actually going to be on It's Showtime with John Harris. And I am going to uh, – uh, that's the name of the show when Billy and I are on doing sports once or twice a month probably. Uh, and we may try to have some other guests on video-wise as well. Uh, how are you doing, Bill? Oh, just wonderful, Johnny. How's it out there in the Midwest there? You know, I, uh, I'm digging it. It's a pretty beautiful day today. Got to get a little motorcycle riding in this week, so uh, things are going good there. Uh, anybody watching, feel free to comment if you want. That would be fine. Uh, we will respond to your uh, your uh, uh, to your comments. <laughs> uh, I think if you comment, we will see it on at least one or two streets. Says can't post comments. Uh, and my buddy Tom DePietro is out there. Hey, Tom. All right. So you have it on yours. That's good. Uh, okay. I don't know what that. I don't have chat restrictions. Post, post. Facebook group, Facebook page. Says I can do it. I don't know why. Okay. So so we'll see what happens. And if we get some comments from you guys, uh, that would be great. Uh, I know I see. Ooh, what happened there? Oh, okay. So, um. But either way, we hope uh, you find it entertaining. We hope you find it uh, interesting. Uh, Billy and I, there, there's no real set limit. I'm going to shoot for an hour and, uh, you know, uh, and try to keep it close to that range. We could go over a little bit, but uh, we're going to chat about a couple of things and then uh, uh, go from there. So, uh, Bill, I guess the first thing to talk about right now, if you're a, a local person from your area, is – how about those Phillies? Yeah, the fighting Phillies, baby. Fighting the night. Fought back tonight, one in the top of the night. Well, yeah, the top of the night, and then held off the Nationals. But they were down. They came back and scored four, I believe it was, in the top of the night. Yeah. Oh, I do see a, a comment on the Facebook side, so we're good there. Uh, 
no problem. We're we're probably going to try and make it as uh, as uh, entertaining as possible, Margie. But thank you for jumping on there. Uh, somebody else is on too. Uh, I hope uh, I hope people that do come on go ahead and you feel free to disagree with us if you want. Because uh, <laughs> uh, first off, we're on a camera, so we can't hurt you. Second of all, you would probably hurt me. So I mean, I'm, I'm pretty fragile these days. So, um, but uh, we've got some stuff we can talk about between uh, like today, baseball, Phillies come back from four down, I think it was, and uh, come back and win by two or three. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, they just keep fighting. They are now within a half game of the uh, New York Mets in the Eastern Division, I believe. So, uh, and guess who comes to town starting tomorrow? Is that they go to Philly. To face the New York Mets. Oh, the New York Mets. So it's going to be a big weekend series. Uh, Get the broom out. Teams. Now, I will tell you that Aaron Nola did not look great today. Um, but he won't face the Mets. Uh, but uh, they pulled that win out. But he didn't look great in his five innings today. The Mets have been snake bit the last few nights. Uh, I will say I watched – toward the end of that game with the Marlins today. And there was a blown ball strike call that really hurt the Mets. Um, and there, there were some in Philly too. Uh, uh, Bill, we talked about this a little bit off camera before the show. What do you think? And anybody listening, let us know or watching. What do you think about the, uh, the automatic umpiring? At home plate, at least. The uh, robot all, up, they called it, I guess. With all the different rule changes, I, 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 I agree. Why not? I mean, if they're going to video review some other stuff, might as well have a strike zone that's automatic. Uh, well, there probably are a couple problems with it. I would imagine the way you'd have to do it would be to have an umpire that can oversee certain things, like uh, – I think one of the problems they had, aren't they trying it in the Atlantic League, one of the minor leagues or an independent league or something? I think the Atlantic League is a is a minor league. Yeah, uh, it's like a minor of a minor league. Like an A, a ball or double yeah. A ball or something. Um, and uh, they are trying it. One of the problems, at least in the beginning, was if a, a pitcher threw a ball in the dirt, it could literally bounce up enough and go across the knees. <laughs> And the robot up would pick it up as a strike. <laughs> so I think you might have to have uh, an overseer or human umpire in the vicinity or somebody in a booth to say, no, okay, we got that call's got to be reversed. The only problem with that is uh, managers and all, and, and people are going to argue that they want more of those reversals, I guess, on occasion. That was clearly outside. You should change that. Well, you know, it might not be the case. It all depends on how they write the rule up when using it. Right. But, uh, uh, oh, okay, and I do see Margie's comment over here on the Be Live site as well. Um, so that's good. So uh, we'll get the comments doubled. I don't know if you can see them, Bill. Or I not. can't see anybody probably on your end because I don't see okay. I don't see uh, her at all. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, between the two of us, let me know if you have one and, and you get a comment or something and you want to address it, let me know, and we'll obviously do that. Um, the, and, and this show is going to go on uh, when we're all done, either tonight or later tonight or tomorrow. Uh, obviously, it'll be reposted again on Facebook by both of us. Uh, but I'm also going to uh, more than likely put it on YouTube and uh, and possibly on iTunes under the Public John uh uh, iTunes situation as well. So we'll see what happens there, but it's definitely going to go on YouTube. So, uh, so, so Bill, you, we got that. Uh, what do you think about this seven inning double header? No, I don't like it at all. <laughs> well, yeah. Give, give, give the fans what they want. They want nine inning game. And I mean, if it goes 20 innings in the first, the first half of the double header, so be it, you know, it's just, yeah, it seems like it's kind of taken away from the uh, the old baseball that we used to know and love. But one thing I did like 
they had the universal DH in last season because of the, the COVID shortened season, but they said absolutely not this year and supposedly going forward. So I'm glad they stuck to their guns on that. I think word out of the Major League Baseball Commissioner's Office is that um, uh, the seven inning doubleheaders are going to be gone, and the um, uh, the, the, extra in, the extra innings went extra yeah, innings. The extra seven, inning that's, will, that sucks too. I don't understand where these guys are. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's going to be gone too. Hey, Joe Wilson's on. Hey, Joe, how hey, you doing? Joe. Uh, and uh, yeah, Margie, they're just starting it out. It's a it's a test phase in the minor in just one of the minor leagues. Um, uh, but Major League Baseball is the one that's getting it tested out, and if they like it, uh, they're going to try it in the major leagues at some point. Whether it's an exhibition season, you know, preseason kind of thing, or whether it's um, or whether they try it in the majors, what. What should scare regular umpires is after a game, a day like today, there's been at least two games where umpires made crucial calls that really could have, uh, really did affect the game. It definitely affected the Miami Met game. Um, they were kind of lucky that, in a way that the Phillies pulled out their game because there would have been all kinds of trouble there too. Because Nolan made about three pitches that they just took away from them, and no, couldn't figure out why there were big pitches. Two of them, I think, would have been out, and uh, you know the umpire just called them balls, and nobody understood why. Then there were calls the umpire in Philly; they're a good four to six inches outside, and he's calling strikes. He had a bad strike zone, and that's that human error that they're trying to get rid of. But you can make the argument that it's a game play by humans. Yeah. Error is going to happen. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a tough situation. It's a tough decision to make. Um, yeah, I think they're getting rid of the seven inning rule, and I think they're getting rid of the. Uh, um, you said it. I just yeah, the man on the man on second and oh, the man on second base. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that either. You know, I could live with that. There was somebody that had an idea for it to say maybe after twelve innings. Yeah, or maybe after thirteen innings, something like that. Then maybe I could see it because I'll tell you when you get games going, you know. 17, 18, 19. Yeah, well, then you got outfielders. You're not seeing good baseball. Yeah. I mean, I went to a game one time, Bill. Uh, me and a buddy were working until 11 o'clock, two different police departments. We were working three to 11. The game was tied and it was in like seventh or eighth inning. And of course, we've been known to have a few liquid refreshments in our day. So we thought, well, let's grab some liquid refreshment. And of course, a lot of people don't realize after the fifth inning, they don't charge admission. You could walk into a ballpark. Right, right. So we, you know, we were 40 minutes normal driving time. Uh, our job gave us kind of carte blanche, so we would drive a little faster than that. So within <laughs> half an hour after work, we're walking into Veteran Stadium. It's like the 12th inning, and we're thinking, we're not going to be here long. The game went until after four in the morning. And here's the thing, like we were saying, it's not really quality baseball. Do you know who hit the winning RBI for the Phillies? Yeah. No. 069 lifetime hitter Mitch Williams. He was the pinch <laughs> hitter. Right, yeah, that's you right. Yeah. No, I remember, yeah. He was the pinch hitter. And he came in and we we're looking at each other like, you gotta be kidding. First off, how do you have Mitch Williams pinch hit for anybody ever? But he hit a little blue. He's a left-handed hitter. Hit a little blue single. He probably hadn't swung the bat all season. Probably, he, probably he, right. over. he went up. I think it was the day. Yeah, it was the days of Fergosi. He was just desperate or didn't care. I think he pinch hit and then was going to put him in the game as the pitcher. And then whatever happened, happened. Uh, but And I can't remember who was on base, but. He got a pinch hit, shallow left field, and a little blue pit. Mm. And the runner scored, and the game was over. And we were like, oh, my God, finally. Oh, man. But then you get uh, yeah, it. we were there to go through. Four then, you get, then you get through all the pitchers, and then you got it, the right fielder pitching and everything else. Yeah, well, that's the other part, too. And, hey, whether you like the guy or not, I remember Jose Canseco losing, like, more than half a season because he was brought in to pitch in that situation and threw some knuckle balls and blew his arm out. Mm -hmm. And he was done for the season. 
And I mean, you know, and there's a guy that at the time was hitting 40, 45 bombs a year, home runs, and are over 100 RBIs. You're losing that for the rest of the season. Yeah. So you take a risk there too. So yeah, I'm I, I'm all for. I, I don't really like that seven inning thing, but I don't. I wouldn't mind the idea that I'd heard like twelfth inning or thirteenth inning. You know, you get that late, then maybe you do something like the the runner. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no doubt. It's a nice compromise, but you're right. I I I would prefer staying with because you've already got decisions to make like crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they were saying oh, it'll be more exciting. There's more managerial decisions. You've already got pitching decisions and pinch hitter decisions to make, especially after nine innings. Right. You know, 22 or 23 innings like that 4 a.m. game. <laughs> There's not much decisions for Gosey could have made. I mean, I'll throw in Mitch Williams, let him bat, and then he can go in and pitch. And then he just got lucky, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, the other the other thing is in Atlantic League, they're thinking about they're pushing the mound back for a foot. Yeah. A foot. So, yeah. Push the pitching mound back. At least twelve inches, right? Yep. That's gonna really it's gonna that's speed gonna up take some poles and some arms. But I was gonna say some of the pitchers, that's gonna really hurt some of the pitchers. And all the pitchers there now and the pitchers in the minor leagues have all all their lives. This has been a universal sixty feet six inches. Yep. Um from the mound to home plate. So it's uh it's really is a is a fairness issue as well. Um you know, obviously, younger kids or younger pitchers brought up through high school and college, and if they do that, they're going to end up moving that mound back, and those younger guys are going to, are going to get used to that. But uh, the ones in the game now are going to be, like you said, there's a chance of blowing out their arms. Uh, point was made earlier, I think you made it, that the third baseman's going to have to watch where he throws the ball, make sure the pitcher ducks. going to have to teach the pitcher to duck on a ground ball with a throw to first. Uh, Friend of mine, David Sladke from New Jersey. Hey, Dave. Nice to see you, Sladke. We go Sladker because he's a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows it. Uh, but thanks for joining us, folks. Thanks. And I see Joe's on. Marty's still on. Yep. Yeah, 4 a.m. in a baseball bro. game. How yep. you doing, Tim? Uh, you know how bad it was at 4 a.m. We'd only taken a six-pack thinking we weren't going to be there very long. Or well, I think it was a 12-pack because it was enough. But by 2 o'clock, we were starting to dry out <laughs> and they're not serving nothing at veteran stadium. Usually Pat booze wise, forget it. Oh at yeah. Sixth or seventh inning. I think uh, they did. At, I think they stopped everything, but then at midnight, I think they figured these, the, the diehards that are here and there were a few hundred by this point, it was a drizzly night too. It was like a miserable <laughs> night. Uh, and uh, I mean, I would think now they would probably suspend the game if it gets to midnight or one o'clock in the morning, but you never know. It all depends where it's at, I guess. And, you know, I mean, imagine you got that night game, a day game the next day. (laughs) Oh man. Oh yeah. You had done four o'clock in the morning. By the time you shower, clean up, get out, get back to the hotel, it's probably seven or eight in the morning and you're supposed to play a one after a one o'clock game. Right, and that's if yeah. that's the last game of the uh, of the series. Of the and series, you're, yeah. You're traveling. So yeah, like, you're traveling, so it's like, oh my god, you'd never catch up. So. Um, hey, here's Janine Smith. Oh, hey, man. I'm, and I'm glad that babe's on. I might hang here's up. Hit on I might hang up on you and hit on that chick. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, honey. Uh, so, yeah, so we can stop the baseball stuff for now. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Red Sox are hanging in there with Tampa Bay. There's going to be some interesting races. Uh, San Francisco and the Giants and the Padres might still hang around. That could be interesting. Um, if the Padres hang around, you never know. They could uh, make that second wild card. You could have the division winner and both wild cards out of that uh, Western division of the uh, National League. Right. American League, I think it could go down to the wire. Now that the Yankees have Rizzo, who's hitting bombs like crazy, he's just going nuts. Rizzo, I, you're saying. I hope the Yankees ain't in it. Jesus. Oh, well, they might be if they keep going. The only thing is the Yankees don't have a lot of pitching. So that might be the one thing that keeps them out. But, boy, they went and picked up some bats. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it looks like Milwaukee's running away with the Central in the National League. Um, I think the White Sox too. The White Sox. The White Sox are doing the same with the Central in the American League. 
And yeah. it looks like right now it's been a two-team race in the American League West between the Mariners and the A's. Mariners, what a surprise there. And the Red Sox yeah. are a surprise, too. Everybody kind of picked them to be third or fourth. So them being in the hunt is a bit of a surprise, too. And they yeah. might get Chris Sale back. And if they oh, really? get, uh, yeah, uh, about another three or four weeks, he's huh. pitching rehab assignments now. Um, and uh, Schwerber could come back at any time. They traded for him. So if they get uh, those two guys back and they hang around Tampa Bay, that could that could make a difference. Um, surprisingly, Seattle is, is, I think, still leading the West by a game or two over Oakland. Um, no, you got, uh, you got Houston. Houston's one of them. Oh, Houston leading? That's right. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about Houston. So yeah, Houston. Houston has a four-and-a-half game lead over Oakland. I mean, uh, Seattle yeah, over Oakland, and then Seattle's – Seven and a half games back. Are they seven and a half now? They were up there. They were up there. So they've dropped quickly. They had a winning streak for quite a while, about 13, 14 games. Uh, then uh, – and and the Angels, of course, they missed Mike Trout badly. Yeah. Uh, they missed that offense. So to me, they're one pitcher short in the rotation and uh, uh, missing Trout on offense. If it wasn't for Otani, they wouldn't even be in the hunt. Really. Right. What oh, a yeah. – is yeah, that guy a player or what? That is just unbelievable, that guy. He is <laughs> – uh, I, I just have never seen anything like that. I guess none of us ever really have. Uh, he's an effective pitcher, a good start. If he didn't want to hit, he would just make the starting rotation for somebody else. Right. Um, and if he didn't want to pitch, I mean, he would just keep hitting bombs. And, and, and he's hit over like 300. Home. He's got like 30 homers, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got like 32 home runs, I think. <laughs> Unreal. Like, that is, that, that's a player, man. <laughs> and then people go, well, this guy could be MVP. How can you say anybody but Otani yeah. right now is the most <laughs> valuable player? I'm sorry. He goes out, pitches, wins games, and is liable to win the game with his back. No. Yeah. Uh-uh. No. Yeah, I – no. If he doesn't win MVP, yeah, it's it's not close, get hurt. Yeah. to me, it wouldn't even be close. So, uh, then, uh, so that's pretty much it for baseball. And then it's rules and stuff. So that'll be interesting. And we can we get in the fall and a little later on we can chat some more about baseball. But well, I'm going to switch to your favorite sport. I mean, I've seen it. Well, I don't know if it's your favorite sport, but you're more knowledgeable in it than I am. Um, is uh, is uh, let's talk some NHL. Let's talk some hockey, buddy. Oh yeah, that, we're all excited with the Flyers. With all the, uh, all I've seen they made some moves. Did now who, did they pick up any any goal scorers, Bill? I know they made uh, trades. Cam Atkinson. They they traded okay, Cam they Atkinson. Guys, more okay. check for Cam Atkinson. Yeah, and it's funny because I have some stats here. Um, they pretty much are similar players, right? But uh, Voracek has played three hundred more games, and they have the same amount of goals. I was just going to say Atkinson so, is known more of a goal scorer than. Then yeah, Warcraft, right, and he's and he's a two way two way player. So I mean, you get you know he's a, he should be a good team leader for the team. Yeah, that's great. That's what they need. And, they need more goal scorers. And they and they got what three defense or no four three four defense, defense and a goalie. Who they pick up in goal? Uh, Martin Jones from the Sharks. Yeah, better than what they had. So, Oh yeah, because he, he he could go in there and play thirty games. You know, where Hart yeah. doesn't have to play. You know, yeah. seventy for five percent of the games. You could you now. Do they keep them. Elliot too, or did they just let him go? No, Elliot went. I think he went down. I think he went to uh, Nashville. He might have went to Florida or oh, or, Florida or something. Somewhere, yeah. And at Tampa Bay, geez, somebody's got to knock them off their heels, man. Wow, but, uh, we got some good defensemen. They they paid off for defensemen. That's know, good. So. Well, it's good to see Flyers making some changes because they've been. Just status stagnant, quo, yeah. not I doing mean, stagnant, not doing anything for a long time. Yeah. So, hey, what's I'm, this with Eric Kane? Uh, did you see that story? Oh yeah, They're yeah, he made, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think he's a dirt bag. To be honest with you. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I guess I guess they got to prove it. Everybody's going to run it. Oh, yeah, yeah, no doubt. But I'm just from other I hope stories, he does whatever it. team he was on, he was always, you know. A problem in the clubhouse. You know? Well, the, I hope for the sake of hockey, he didn't. He didn't do it. Uh, not for his sake. I don't know the guy. I don't care about the guy that much. Right. I, I recognize the name though, which tells me he's one of two things: either a great player or kind of a jerk. 
Right. Uh, I'm leaning toward jerk. Um, and this could be a smear tactic. You know, they, it is from his ex-wife is how it started. She's yeah. the one on her Instagram account or something that started the whole thing and said he did. And you never know. He might have just come home, ticked off after a game and went, you know what I should have done? <laughs> and she just ran with it. Who knows? You know, maybe she's not getting enough. Yeah. I mean, really, if you think about it, she's kind of stupid because – if she gets him booted out of the NHL, guess what's going to happen to your alimony, pretty middle patty square pants? You ain't getting yeah. nothing. You get could go from millions of dollars in salary, which would mean more alimony for her, or uh, bupkis, okay? yeah. <laughs> where she might be making more as a secretary, have to pay him alimony because he can't get a job. <laughs> oh, yeah, you keep going, baby. I'll be representing Mr. Kane, and uh, we'll be seeing your checks come to us because you are a dumbass. And if she does have money and it's proven that he's right, he's got to go to a lawyer. He's got to go to Harris, Shyster, and Harris. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put some liens on everything that she owns. So, there you go. Then it's slander, libel, and defamation character. And the people that published it without checking out the facts first. So, and that happens a lot these days, not just in sports, but in everything. Um, so, uh, Mama Bear. Janine, oh, Margie calls her Mama Bear. Mama Bear. Ooh. Oh, I don't know what the, that's good or bad. <laughs> usually, bear, Mama means old or good. Bears usually mean big. Or, me, or both. And they got a sweet honey pot. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying anything. I'm out. 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 I would say this is a PG show, but yeah, it was a <laughs> oh, I just blew that, didn't I? Um, uh, but uh, yeah, I'm staying out of that one. Um, <laughs> So it looks like the Flyers will at least be improved by some, Bill. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it no might doubt. take a few games to uh, get them going. I mean, they got they they finally got defense in front of Carter Hart. You know, the, the kid lost his confidence. And now, I mean, now they have uh, Ryan Ellis, uh, um, Rasmus uh, Bristolainen, and uh, Keith Yandel. Keith Yandel is an interesting pick. He's he's the Iron Man of the NHL. He's played in 965 straight games. Really? 965? Yeah. So you're talking, what, 10 years? Almost 11 yeah. years? A straight? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. In hockey? Yeah, I heard that. Years, he's like in, in hockey. I mean, yeah. where every hit could really just whack the crap out of him. One hit yeah. could knock you out for, you know, season, career, whatever. And uh, and he's still in it. So man, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, nine sixty five. Well, that's good because he's durable. Flyers sure could use that. They sure could use a little bit better defensive. How? Don't get me wrong. I used to like Gothisphere. Uh, Gothisphere, at least when he first started. The ghost. I used to like him. Right. Uh, I didn't. Last season, I didn't think he uh, was all that hot. You know, um, he's a what I like about him is he's an offensive defense. Right, right. Um, but you know what? It's funny is when you get traded for nothing, <laughs> literally got sent. I can't remember who it was. was it the Sharks? We, actually, the actually, we had to give up a pick for him. I was just going to say, wait a minute. We're sending you and a future draft pick to um, – um, Bum screw Egypt hockey team. Um, we don't want nothing back. <laughs> we don't need anything. You just go. Yeah. <laughs> Pack your bag. Enjoy the scenery. Somebody's <laughs> gonna pay you. It's just not gonna be us. Well, when he went on waiver, he went he he cleared waivers last year, so nobody, I was say, nobody him. claimed him, right? And nobody claimed him. So in order to get rid of his five million dollar contract, right. you had, you had, had to, to clear up the cap. Yeah, to, and that's the thing. Get him away yeah. and and some. Yeah, I'm surprised though that the NHL would just allow. We're just going to give him away. Yeah. But I guess if you think about it, it's either that or a different creative way. Like, look, give us your Zamboni, your backup <laughs> Zamboni driver. Yeah, <laughs> not yeah. even this is a Zamboni driver. and a bag of pucks. You know. Yeah, yeah, a bag of used pucks. Uh, one broken stick. 
and your backup Zamboni driver. <laughs> Not the front line driver. We know that's too much in the legal step in. The back of that. Yeah, and a picture of the Hanson brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the picture of the Hanson brothers would probably be valuable. That'd be well, cool. I, I love the Hanson brothers. Every so often, I still put that movie in. It's great. First off, to watch the clothing and remember it going, oh, my God, I remember wearing those outfits. The plaid pants with the striped shirts at the same time. Woo! The big platform bell-bottom shoe. Oh, man. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're going to improve a little bit, uh, but uh, I, I'm I'm thinking Tampa Bay has still got to be the team to beat. That's got to be your target if you're anybody you else in the NHL. Away. I mean, I'm not going to take anything away from Tampa, but they were over the cap, and yeah. the NHL lets them get away with it because they had like an injured guy and he came back. Oh, I remember that he came back in the playoff. Yeah. Right? And it's like, well, come, I mean, how the hell do you have a salary cap and you don't go by it? Oh uh, yeah. Well, see, oh, I just got to ask, Margie just asked me, where's my sports cap? Now I can tell the story, buddy. Yeah, there wearing, you go. I, am wear, I was waiting. I am wearing a Super Bowl Kansas City Chiefs t-shirt, for one thing. Winner, winner, lots of chicken dinners that year. Woo-hoo! Uh, this, in honor of the NFL, and we might as well segue right to it. Thank you for the opportunity to segue, which tonight, of course, is the Hall of Fame game I have on here. Uh, on the side in the public John studio on the big screen. There's still no score, by the way, buddy. Uh, this is the hat of the coach that the Super Bowl trophy is named after. This would be a hat he would wear, and that is Vince Lombardi. And actually, if I didn't have this, some people say I might even look like him a little bit. <laughs> Come on, let's go to Kramer Block, somebody. Uh, <laughs> The great Vince Lombardi, uh, championship coach of the Green Bay Packers, coach of the Washington Redskins, uh, when they were the Redskins, not the Washington football yeah, team. Yeah, the Washington football team. Now they're the Washington football team. Uh, but uh, this is the style hat that he would wear. And I do have about three or four of these hats. I do like these hats, I got to admit. <laughs> but uh, this is the color and style, I believe, that he would wear. So in honor of the NFL Hall of Fame and their uh, the Hall of Fame game and all the inductees being presented tonight in Canton, Ohio, and us having a sports show, I am wearing the Vince Lombardi-like hat. Go Vince. Uh, oh, I'm wrong. It's 3-0 uh, uh, Cowgirls. The Cowgirls are playing the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers tonight, uh, and uh, I hate the Cowgirls. But I always have some. Uh, this is going to be weird. They're letting players wear their whatever number they want now. <laughs> like that guy just called a ball was number one. In in the NFL for years, number one might be like the kicker. <laughs> so now it's going to be weird. Like, who's the, who's the kicker that just called a pass across the middle? It's going to be weird for a little while. But uh, I can say that. Uh, it's uh, like in college. And, and I agree with that. The numbers aren't on your backs aren't important as long as they're different than the uh, next guy, you know? So um, I'm all right with that. Um, so uh, NFL, Bill, uh, I don't think any major rule changes that I know of this year. Do you? No, not the, not that I'm aware of. No, I didn't, I didn't see any. Uh, Prescott's out because supposedly he has an inflamed shoulder. So he's, they're going to rest him for two or three weeks on injury news. Aaron Rodgers is making kissy face and kind of making up <laughs> with the Packers. And they're looking at, they did rework his contract, but it makes him a free agent, I believe, at the end of next year. Yes. Um, but it is a work in progress, his words, to uh, communicate and get a better relationship with the GM. He did say that he would like to play the rest of his career in Green Bay. He likes the city. He likes the But everybody says that so that they don't have to right. go through crap like they do every year. Um so there's some interesting stuff. Uh, is Saquon Barkley going to be healthy for the Giants? Uh, how good is Daniel Jones going to be? Uh, yeah. In Philly, how good is Jalen Hurts going to be? Is Devontae Smith going to be recovered from his injury in time for the season to start? You know what I read up today on that? They were, they were talking they're, – they're in talks about getting uh, Deshaun Watson. So. I heard that uh, last week and this week, and it's still a possibility, I guess, I, I'm mixed on it 
as an Eagles fan because you hate to spend too much, go get him, and then find out criminal charges are coming and you might lose him. But right. when that happens, it'd be way down the road. But you also know Philly. And, you know, they might not take too kindly to a guy like that. But then again, they gave forgave Michael Vick. But then again, that was dogs. This is abusing women. Right. Um, right. So I don't uh, think it's worth the risk. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. He's a great talent. He really is. Uh, first off, though, you better have an offensive line because he's going to have to run for his life, which he's used to doing. Right. Uh, he'll create plays, but is it worth the PR risk? Uh, or is it worth the fact that you could have him? The first de deposition isn't until February, so you'd have him all this season. But you don't know if you'd have him next season. Right. And if you do, is that the last season? It only takes one criminal case, and he's out. Civil cases won't matter. That'll be writing checks. Right. So he'll have to keep playing. Uh, that would be the good thing. You could have him locked up for a long time probably because he's got to keep making money. Right. But the bad part would be if criminal cases come up uh, and he's found guilty or it's mandated that he's in court during the season, you're going to lose him. Mm -hmm. um, so – you can't give up too much to get. Right. But is it worth the risk? The way the Eagles are right now, you know, risk it for a couple of years it might be if you're not giving up too much. And Houston, Houston might think of it as, hey, we might as well get something. Yes, so, let's get something for nothing. Get us a draft pick. Do you send Jalen Hurts to Houston? If you're not going to play him, he's not going to be thrilled. Right. We drafted him high. You know, then you got to look around for a backup, but Yo, well, you still have Flacco. They signed Flacco, so there's your backup still. Right. I'd say send the kid. And you might be able to do that even up. Yeah. Because of all the because of his situation. Yeah, so no, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you got that. Uh San Francisco is thinking about uh starting their rookie. Uh Lynch, right. I think it is. Uh, uh I think it's Lynch, isn't it? No, it's um is it Trevor Lynch? Is that what it is? Or I'm not sure. You're, I, I, you know, I had it. I knew it, and I don't have it now. But whoever the rookie draft pick was, uh, is who they're considering starting. Um, and then you got my team. Yeah. Well, you got Carson. That's where we were going to end. That was going to be yeah. the, the yeah. big story. That's the end. That's the one we're going to wrap in there. How about <laughs> that, you former Carson Wentz fans? How about yeah. that, you Eagles fans? Uh, the one thing Carson Wentz could have done for you, he can't do now. And that was play enough to get you a draft, a first round draft pick. Now it looks like that's not going to happen. Five to 12 weeks he's out with an old ankle injury. An old ankle injury. Since high school, this injury was, they said. Yeah. And, he turned, and he turned the wrong way and hurt it. Come on. What's Carson, up with this guy? Carson made a glass Wentz. Yep. His favorite rock and roll song, Hurt by Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> I hurt myself today just to see if I could feel. <laughs> um, apparently, you can. Yeah. <laughs> You're out. So now what do the Colts do? Right now they're starting uh, uh, the guy in the number one, taking all one reps, is a guy that they just drafted, never played in the yeah, NFL. Right. And then they picked up that Hunley guy from – Hunley, Hunley uh, guy uh, with experience. And he's, as Bill Murray used to, or uh, Chevy Chase used to say in Caddyshack, he's not, uh, he's not, uh, he's not good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's not good. He's not good. <laughs> and they lost their uh, best lineman, Quentin Nelson. Yes. He's, he's that same injury, like five to 12 same weeks. Same injury. Five like, to, and five to 12 weeks. That's a big span, huh? That's like, uh, that's weird. But yeah, not going to, not going to be good. It's bad. <laughs> it looks bad for the cold. But you never know. If it is five weeks, he could be back in time to start the season or maybe week two. That's not so bad. And the Colts' first five games are tough. Yeah. yeah it's, not a, it's not a good schedule for them to miss their number one quarterback. Um, so, yeah, that's not great. I mean, we're going we're gonna to have a show. Uh, if it's not next week, it'll be week after Bill and I will be on. It's going to be all NFL football. And uh, we can make our picks, Bill, for the season. Who's going to win uh, 
divisions, who's going to make playoffs and wild cards, things like that. Uh, and uh, if it goes real well, uh, we may have another one the next week on uh, fantasy, which Bill to me is almost an expert in fantasy. This little guy, <laughs> I hate you. Uh, yeah, they call me the they call me the Bill Belichick of the of yeah the Bill Belichick of the <laughs> fantasy football league. Uh, it, I mean, we would have really close games, uh, but then I would lose to some scrub. <laughs> so I, I would lose to somebody that was playing their backup quarterback who was had who was right-handed but had to throw this left hand due to injury, and I'd still lose. I mean, everything went wrong for me in those leagues. I think one year you and I went to the championship game or something, or that might have been a different league. But there was one year we went to a championship game. I think you won that one. But I don't think I've ever quite won. I've won an ESPN league. And I won something else once, but well, you got to have a better team than the UConn Pete's. Come on, yeah, UConn <laughs> Pete. Quit on UConn Pete. <laughs> I had the Pleasantville Piranha, yeah. <laughs> uh, um, the Galloway Gator, something I forget what that was, but they were they were that that team bad. Uh, <laughs> they, they were. Freaking bad. Um, anyway, uh, I'm looking at it going, I wouldn't have drafted these guys if I was in the NFL on draft day. <laughs> How did I end up with this team? And then remember the year I had I had what looked like was going to be a great team. As much as I didn't like him, I drafted Tom Brady. And the first game of the year, the bastard gets hurt. And Matt Castle has to start the rest of the season. What the hell? And then, like two years later, I drafted Aaron Rodgers, <laughs> and he got hurt. He got hurt, <laughs> and I'm like, I, I'm done. I'm out of here. You should have suited up. <laughs> I know. I was like, I got a better shot but then this than that guy. Oh man, it was bad. It was Matt Flynn. He had one great game, and then after <laughs> that, <laughs> he was done. Where's my flush tone from the public John when I need it? <laughs> he was bad. You flush him away. But uh, it's going to be an interesting football season. I think the I, I the thing I find interesting is the Detroit and the Rams trade, mm -hmm. Stafford for Goff. I I think the Rams are going to go. Uh, it's going to be great for the Rams, and I oh, think yeah. Detroit went back to being Detroit. They make the wrong pick on the wrong player, and now we're going to be at best mediocre. Right. <laughs> you know. I just really think it's it's not going to be pretty for Detroit. I hope I'm wrong. I'd like to see Detroit get in the mix somehow, but uh, it's not good. Yeah. Kirk Cousins has been out with COVID. Uh, he might get cleared in a week or two to rejoin Minnesota's practice, but they don't know for sure. Uh, hey, my cousin's on. Hey, Dave Shivo, what's happening, buddy? Uh, yeah, I don't see Dave on this side. He's on your side, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's going to be tough, brother. I think for some of these teams, uh, Atlanta might have it tough because uh, oh, yeah, they're, they're kind of starting play. over. Yeah. Uh, Panthers, uh, Panthers made a nice deal, uh, getting a new QB, right? With uh, yeah, Sam Darnold, maybe right? Sam Darnold. I think the jury's out, but I think part of the reason he had a problem was uh, coach. He was in New York, the coach. Yeah. Uh, Gage, Gage, who always looks like his eyes are this big around because he knows he doesn't belong there. He's in <laughs> wonderment. Wow. Yeah. Um, they're watching Tua is going to be interesting this year. See how he does in his second year of starting. Uh, who's going to start in Denver? Is it going to be Bridgewater? It's Bridgewater yeah. out there, right? Or is it going to be yeah. two locks still? Uh, Oakland's tougher than a lot of people think. I mean, they proved that to the Chiefs last year. People mm -hmm. were always uh, saying that they were going to get a oh, field goal Dallas short one. No good. I don't know if it was shanked or blocked. I'm thinking it was blocked, but we'll see. Because uh, they keep showing the special teams coach for the Steelers. Oh, no, that's Ben. That's Big Ben because he's not playing with them. Yeah, that's Big Ben. That was Big Ben. So <laughs> oh, There's Peyton in the booth. A lot of people think Peyton, I guess he's going to do some of the Monday night football, him and Eli. Oh, nice. Either splitting it or 
helping out being the third man in the booth uh, a couple of times, both of them, I guess, separately, different games. That'll be interesting. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be an interesting season, I think, Bill. Yep, I think so. Looking forward to it. Yep, ought to be fun. Uh, Forty-five minutes past the hour. If you're watching, we still uh, Bill and I are talking just some basic general sports stuff. This 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 show just to get us going. Uh, uh, get you guys thinking about some of this stuff. Uh, like I said, we're going to be putting it on YouTube, and it, it's it's showtime. Because that's basically what sports is. So that's how we're going to bring back it's showtime for now. Most of the time, if it's showtime, it's probably going to be sports related for now anyway, until we see what else happens. Uh, everything else will probably still fall under the Public John Media, which we do have the Public John Media LLC. So there's all kinds of things going on with that. And if and when things clear up again, it was just about ready, Bill, to go back out on the road for a couple things for some comedy shows. and. Um, all this hit again. So uh, 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 I had a Vegas thing set up once. It got rescheduled. It was just about to get scheduled again, but now I got told it's going to be pushed back further because of it. So, uh, and that would be pretty cool for me. I would like to do Vegas one time. That would be sweet. So um, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when, or it's supposed to happen. It's just a matter of, I think, when all this kind of clears up a bit. So, but I think uh, sports-wise, we're doing good. We got the Olympics. Uh, I mean, some great performances in the Olympics. Uh, did you see where the two pole vaulters, I think different countries, but they trained together, uh, both had cleared a particular height. They were the only two guys that cleared it. The only way to decide which one would be considered a single gold medal winner would be for them to have like a sudden death jump off. Oh, no, I didn't see that. They would keep going as high as they could go, and then the first one to not make it would would lose, obviously. The other option the Olympics allow is they could share the gold medal. Both of them got together and said, you know what? We're friends, and yeah, let's do that. So in the spirit of sportsmanship, they decided, let's share the gold medal. Nice. And I'm like, that's pretty cool if you think about it. That's really what the Olympics is supposed to be all about. You know, is is you do everything you can. You bust your hump. You try as hard as you can. But also recognize that other athletes are too, you know. Right. So uh, then there was a woman. I, I, I want to say she was from Great Britain. She might have been from France. She was she's probably considered one of the best in the world at the 200. And suddenly something snapped in her leg about halfway through and she went down. She was down on the track um, to the point where they brought a wheelchair out for her and had gurneys and everything. She wouldn't go in the wheelchair. The race was really over, but she got up and wanted to walk across the finish line. She wanted to finish the race and she did. And you can see she's barely walked and then basically collapsed at the finish line and they took her. Um, and she had battled back from a ruptured Achilles before and all kinds of things, but was supposedly the, the best in the world at this and uh, ended up having to, to do that. But there are so many great stories. Of course, everybody knows the Simone Biles story. Uh, and I give her credit for going on the beam and, and finishing out and staying with her team and cheering them on. I mean, she could have said, you know what, I'm, I'm done. I can't get my head wrapped around this and, uh, and I could see that where they said she had the twisties is, is the name for it. But mm -hmm. I could see that where, you know, you're so high up in the air. If you lose your uh, um, coherence, if you lose what you're doing, you can't keep track of where you are, and what you're supposed to do. Man, you're risking injury, if not worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, because these folks get way up in the air for some of Oh, yeah. No doubt. They land wrong because they don't know what's going on. Um, it, it wouldn't be very good. So uh, I give her credit for hanging around, for still doing and winning a bronze in an individual uh, uh, a contest on the vault uh, or on the beam. It was balance beam, I think. Um, kudos to her, obviously. Um, but I like the fact that she stayed, cheered on her team, and a couple of them won gold medals and other and silver and bronze medals too that weren't expected to even 
place. So, yeah. you know, good for them. Um, yeah. Uh, and there's all kinds of things. It's getting into track and field now the rest of the week, and I really do like track and field. I think tonight is is it tonight or tomorrow night's the gold medal basketball game, the USA and France. Yeah, I'm surprised they got there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I am too. Um, but they made it. France just barely beat Slovenia with oh, a so, so France won. I was, yeah. I didn't see it. Yeah, France okay. won. So France is the team that beat the U.S. in pool play. So this is going to be a heck of a game. This, this could be tough. Um, you got women's three on three, um, which has really been good. Um, the American Beach Volleyball girls are playing in the final. I don't know if that's tonight or tomorrow. Um, but uh, there's been a lot of stories, not just U.S. There's been like China's won the most gold medals. The U.S. has won the most medals, period. Yeah, totally. um, yes. A great story, female power weightlifter uh, for the U.S. Uh, tremendous story. Um, and I can't remember her name, and I meant to write it down and bring it up. Uh, draped herself in the American flag, said she's proud to have, African-American girl, proud to have competed and won for her country. Uh, and she's happy that she lives in America. I mean. Um, That's how it should be. You know, yeah, you're, great you're, you're, you're there. Yeah. You're, you're there supporting America. And, and, well, here's the thing. I don't mind you having the right to protest. That's fine. It's free speech. But to a point, be respectful. Because nowadays, Olympians get paid to train. You really are professional because that's what happened. It's how it all started was when the Russians had their basketball teams and their weightlifting teams and their track and field teams. Those folks, skaters, gymnastics, they were all on the hunt, and then they found out that they were all getting paid mm -hmm. either by the government or they were given government jobs, and their job was to go train to be world champions in their sport. So um, that was the difference. So if to me, though, if you're getting paid by your country, uh, you know, I don't mind you protesting to a point, but be respectful. Um, there are, the one place the Olympics has that you're not supposed to be disrespectful to your country or anybody is on the podium. And apparently they're looking into sanctions to some people uh, because they were disrespectful on the podium. Um, and I agree with that too. Right. Um, you know, I would rather you decide don't go on the podium if your only option is to not show the respect for your country that really basically paid your way and made it possible for you to go. You know, um, there's all, there's all different ways to, to yeah, there's uh, different ways of, of I mean, letting your voice be heard. Uh, I mean, I'm going at a press conference after the event when you've won or after you've been given the medal, do it there. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, but uh, you know, everybody's different, I guess, but yes, the power lifter, was also a great story, a young African-American girl, outstanding story uh, for the U.S. No one ever won that medal for the U.S. before. Never won a medal ever in uh, female powerlifting, and she won the gold. Uh, so good for her. Um, so even though this Olympics is tainted by all the COVID stuff and no fans in the stands or nothing, um, they are letting athletes come in and watch each other, which is cool. Um, it's had some great moments. And uh, I guess at this point, uh, I, I at first I was like, they shouldn't put it on. They shouldn't put it on. Nobody's going to be there. Everybody. I'm kind of glad they did. My, my thinking was changed because uh, – of uh, some of the great moments that they've had. But uh, it's still not the same as when we were kids. But I just don't think it's the same as when we were kids. Um, they got the coverage is the same. Track and field was huge when we were kids. The track and field week was huge uh, for uh, for the Olympics. But everybody tuned into the Olympics. Now it's it's scattered. Half of it's on Peacock, the other which is an NBC network. The other half of it, part of it's on the regular uh, network, NBC. Uh, things get all scattered and stuff. But that'll get me started with how 
TV works these days anyway, and I don't want to go there. So, well, I think they're uh, taking a hit. They're taking a hit on the viewers too, but just because, like you said, with the protests, and some people are just fed up. You know, some they, some people were even glad that the women's soccer team didn't didn't, didn't win gold. Yeah. yeah, and see, to me, that's wrong. Keep saying but, that's karma, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah, but um, I don't know. It's a shame that politics enters into this, right? Um, and I think that's what the Olympic Committee, when the, with their podium rule, is trying to do is say, look, we're out here for the sportsmanship. We're out here to communicate with each other throughout the world. Um, let's keep politics out of it. But today's day and age, you just can't, I guess. Um, and not just the U.S., everybody. Oh, yeah, that's everybody. I mean, it's happened ever since Hitler had the 36 Olympics with Jesse Owens way back when. It probably happened before then. Uh, there's always been some uh, element of politics involved. Um, so I guess we got to deal with it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm still glad they put it on. Uh, the Japanese people aren't. The people in Japan did not want the Olympics in the first place, the population. And then when COVID reared its head, they still really were adamant about, we don't want it here. Right. Um, but... You know, uh, apparently the powers that be in Japan said we do, <laughs> and we're <laughs> going to have it. Uh, what do we think about the nonsense with the women volleyball team suits? I, I don't. Uh, I'll be honest. I don't know what the. Uh, if, is there a controversy about them? I don't know. They're always they're, very, they're, very skimpy. There's very. a thing about being skimpy and everything. I mean, it's just they've this. always been skimpy. Yeah, I mean. You can argue it both ways, I think. Uh, one, it does. I guess they do look like they exploit women because they, they're they very skimpy. But the other part of that is even if it's inside, it's, say it's supposed to be beach volleyball and the people playing beach volleyball, even for recreation, are usually in swimsuits and bikinis. So you can make an argument that the tradition is that, um, but – you can I, think, I think if the player, I, I, I want to, if the players don't want to wear that, I think they would have a I say. I think in you got to give them an alternative. I think, I, you know what? I think that's the answer. Right. Uh, let's compromise and let's uh, let's give them an alternative. They don't have to necessarily wear a, a, a very skimpy swimsuit. You know, they could wear, a, you know, wear a, a one piece or something. Right. Um, I did see. A quick blurb today about the beach volleyball, and, and it showed a couple of them, and uh, not just the U.S., but everybody. The other teams were too. Everybody in that sport are wearing very skimpy uh, bathing suit type outfits. Um, so it is the sport, not necessarily the just the U.S. team. But um, yeah, and 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 yeah, you don't see men in in. Uh, Banana hammocks playing. Margie makes a good point. You know, uh, women wearing bikinis versus men wearing shorts. Yeah, uh, yeah men aren't wearing spandex and uh, you know jock straps and things like that. Uh, so I guess you can make that point. Of course, there are some misogynistic male chauvinist pigs who will go, "Yeah, but men don't wear shirts. Maybe women should take off their shirts." You know? uh, even I, I wouldn't mind that. <laughs> I was actually, <laughs> there you go. I found the guy. Uh, no, even I would say no. We don't want to. Do that. No. Uh, yeah. um, if anything, make the men wear shirts. I mean, you know, you don't have to. But um, but there, that's how they dress at the beach. So you can make that argument. Beach volleyball is this right. in real life. Um, but you know, I, I agree. I think your answer is the best one, Bill. Is give them a uh, a chance to wear something a little less uh, uh, revealing if they want. Um, and I mean, let's face it: track and field folks wear, um, you know, they're folks that are running and jumping over hurdles and high, and they don't wear those type of outfits. You know what it is too, though. I mean. They like you said, it's beach volleyball. I mean, even before the Olympics, if they're practicing, I'm sure they're practicing in the same thing, whatever it makes. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, oh, I mean, exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah. But, uh, but I, but I like your compromise. I really do. It's, I mean, if you want to wear something that's not uh, 
more more like, like booty like like booty shorts compared to uh, yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. yeah. or or yeah. they're going to wear something like swimmers wear I think something very snug because you do need to support yourself male and female they're different areas of the bodies but you do have to support yourself um, and uh, I, I would think that there would be a, a, a probably a snug fitting kind of an outfit like some of the track stars are wearing and, and stuff like that now uh, that would not affect your performance. And that's the key too, is in volleyball, people think of, you know, a, a baggy outfit affects your ability to jump or move around. I don't buy that, but uh, I think you, uh, I, I think, I, I admit, I think your compromise is a pretty good one. And I'm sure it's been thought of, but, you know, I think somebody would have to make, Again, some type of a protest, not at the Olympics, make it back home, back in your country, uh, you know, and go to the people and saying, hey, you know, there's got to be something else. I don't want my butt showing on international television, uh, you know, and have to always pull something out of something. You know, I could see that. Uh, so it's a good question, Margie. Thanks. Uh, she says, yeah, chafing with banana hammock. Yeah. And yeah, that could be a problem. I mean, I mean, you get the, you know, you're perspiring heavily wearing something like that or, or just your red, white, and blue supporter <laughs> as a guy. Now, now Margie, uh, Margie, would you like to see that happening? See, Margie probably wouldn't mind would like seeing a, a banana and young a guy banana in a banana, banana hammock thing. jumping up and down, spiking things. And, <laughs> You know, uh, so maybe, but <laughs> there's something wrong with all of us. <laughs> with all of us. But at least I'm glad I'm not alone. But there's there's something wrong with no all comments, of us. Right? Look. No comments. No comment, which pretty much is so a comment. Means, yes, she wants to see it. <laughs> that means, uh, and she's laughing about it. So chances are he wants to see Bruce jumping up and down. <laughs> oh, man. Um, but can you blame her? I don't, because we're in the opposite mode. So, um, and uh, I'm trying to think. Oh, last but not least, we can touch a little bit on the NBA. Um, I think it's our last major sport. Um, and uh, been a lot of interesting moves in the NBA the last couple of weeks, Bill, with the trade deadline and drafts. And... Did you make it? You missed it. I missed it. <laughs> Folks, let me tell you something. Bill was practicing that shot. I don't know if you can see, but there was a basketball hoop behind his left shoulder, and uh, he uh, he'd been practicing pregame. I don't know where it went, <laughs> and uh, now it's gone. He, was, uh, he even had help earlier too. But, uh, he had one of those. If you ever watched the three point contest, yeah. he had one of them ball retrievers going to get the ball. <laughs> try it again. Try it again. You know, speak, speaking of the NBA. Yes. If I'm if I'm born again, I want to be an NBA player because you Ooh. see the contract that Steph Curry just got. Unbelievable. Well, I just, you remember just, maybe baseball, Bill. I mean, look at Mike Trout's contract. True, but I mean, this is a second two hundred million dollar contract. It's true, unbelievable. true, and it's only what four years. Yeah, he's going to make over fifty mil a year. And, and, and he makes more in endorsements. So, oh, well, his he's, endorsements. Well, he's got he's got Subway. He's got uh, a couple other things, and he's got the whatever, not and, Nike, whatever else. He oh used. yeah, Reba, and he's got the executive producer of Holy Moly, yeah. the the mini putt game, which we should mention that it's a sport. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think this week might be the finale. Oh, it might be tonight. Tonight's Thursday. It might be right now. <laughs> I might be missing it. Holy Moly, which there were a couple of South Jersey guys in it. One this year, one last year. Uh, one last year, I actually know, I, I, vaguely, I don't know him well. I actually know his mom pretty well. Um, his mom was one of the managers at Leatherheads uh, at, uh, yeah, when I had the comedy club there. Uh, <laughs> Margie, Margie, when we asked it again, said, well, yeah, I got a pulse. <laughs> it's got a pulse, wants to see the guy. So in other words, if it has a pulse or you, or you have no, ups, She you has have, a pulse. You had, of course I'm going to watch that. I have a pulse. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like, hey, hey. You know, hey, hey. I, may be, uh, I may be old and Christy Brickley might be my age, but if she wants to walk around and play some beach bikini stuff, Okay. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Christy Brickley could be 95. 
I would still have a thing for him. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, I used to be on the Sports Illustrated cover. Yeah, I used to have it. <laughs> yeah, under my mattress for a long time. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Oh, yeah. Holy moly. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll see Holy Moly on, on. I won't turn it on now. I'll watch it now that I've missed the start. I'll watch it on. Uh, uh, Hulu probably tomorrow or something, but it and it's funny, Bill. It is, but Steph Curry is uh, like the executive producer, and he's kind of semi involved. Like he uh, supposedly he helps with design the courses. I don't know if that part's true, but he does. They always do show him coming on, describing a new course, um, and he always presents the winner on video with with this and that and all that. Uh, and I think he's the one writing the, the winner check, which is like $250,000. To you and me, I'm like, woohoo! To him, it's like, I just lost five bucks. To, uh, <laughs> and I lost a fiver. Did you see the Cry yeah, Baby? I, I, nothing to him. Uh, did you see Cry, Cry Baby LeBron? He's bringing back all the retreads. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's what I was going to talk about is the Lakers. LeBron <laughs> went to the old age home, <laughs> pulled up in the, in the little mini bus. That, that mini handicap bus thing and is whipping out some octogenarians to come play. <laughs> Man. Oh, all right. Hey, did you see Andre Drummond signed with the Sixers? Yeah. Well, I mean, he could have signed with the Lakers, but he said, I saw the guys they were signing and realized there's really no place for me. I would rather go to a good team. Of course, then he put the good spin on a good team with a great coach. I've wanted to play for Doc for a long time uh, and a place where I'm going to at least get to play. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see him play play alongside of Embiid. You put, you know, put one at center and one at power forward. I think that would yeah. be nice instead of just having to come off the bench. Yeah. Yeah. It was Margie. Uh, Margie says, I think it was one of Rudy Real's friends. Yeah. It was Aaron Kaminsky, who yeah. was on as El Presidente, is how he was on Holy Moly. Uh, and he's got uh, Lisa Semino is his mom um, from, uh, um, she managed uh, Leatherheads uh, when we were out there, when it was still open. Uh, uh, yeah, and, and he did okay. I think he won his first round and lost in the second, I believe. Uh, but then there was a guy on from South Jersey, from that same crew with Aaron and them guys this year, but I can't remember his name, and I don't remember which guy he was. So I think he's already played, but uh, um, and, and I think he was defeated. But it's uh, – it's gonna be fun. Uh, holy moly, is a good time. It's kind of it's kind of a funny thing. And Rob Riggles on there is the. Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen it a few times. I mean, it's kind of funny. It's funny that they got a, a semi real announcer like Joe Tessitore. That to me is funny, and he plays off pretty well. He's got a good sense of humor, but it's kind of funny that they did that. Uh, uh, I mean, you're not gonna get Joe Buck, but you know, yeah, it's kind right. of funny that they did. It's an ABC show, so I'm sure they were like. What announcer could we get? Well, Monday Night Football hasn't started yet, so we don't need Tessa Tour for a while. It's, you know, there's no boxing on because that's the only two things I think he does for them now. Uh, so let's uh, let's kick him over that way. I don't even know. Does he do Monday? Yeah, he's still doing Monday Night Football, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, NHL's coming back to ESPN, right? Yes. Yeah, I think this season. Uh Wipeout meets mini golf. They went overboard now. It used to be good, the wipeout. Now it's like a wipeout. Yeah, I haven't watched it in the last couple of years because yeah, it was starting to get any you know, sometimes they can't settle for different people doing those things. It's gotta be let's change the course, let's change right. the event. Right. Well, you know, if you do an event and I do the same event the results are going to be different. It's still going to be fun to watch. It's like we watch football. It's the same rules for whoever plays. Why do you have to change it that much? I don't want to, you know, I, you're right. It's just too much. But I don't want to spend too much time on wipeout, even mini golf. It's not that. It's not, they're not really sports. Um, NBA is going to be a lot of fun, I think, uh, to watch this coming season, off and on, or at least watch what goes on. Uh yeah, the LA, the Lakers are going to be interesting uh, because yeah, LeBron you know backed up the van to the old age home and boom. Uh, 
The Chicago Bulls made some moves. Made some good moves, yeah. Made some good moves, I think. And if those guys can gel as a team, which obviously is important when you're five on five on a basketball court, if they can gel pretty good as a team, they could be a, an interesting team to watch. I was surprised, but then when I remembered the background, I wasn't that Kemba Walker went to the Knicks because mm-hmm. um, he grew up in New York. And, and of course, he's going to have the big media stage. They did sign Randall. Uh, so they re-signed him and keep him there, but I don't know if the Knicks have much else. Uh, they're one of Miami those. Miami should be good. Miami may picked up. Uh, was it DeRozan? Yes, Miami really improved themselves. Uh, Dwight Howard went back to the Lakers. Um, I think uh, you know the one that puzzled me was Whiteside went to Utah, and Utah already has Gobert. So I mean, yeah, I don't they're, understand what that is. They're going to do two big men playing at the same time too. That could be. It could be he could be backing up Gobert and then being in there at the same time sometimes, depending on the situation. You gotta remember Denver has Jokic. So they may want the advantage there, uh, at least when they play teams like Denver and um and I think they kind of found out, a couple of teams found out, um, if you have a couple of big guys inside, you can hold your own, slow the game down. Mm-hmm. And look at Milwaukee. It wasn't three point baskets that beat um, it was a three-point basket to beat the Nets, and it wasn't three-point baskets that beat the Suns. They went. They finally, after game two with the Suns, started going inside with Giannis. They yeah. started taking the ball inside, and you have to do that, I think, so that you can set up that outside three-pointer. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't take the ball inside, they know you're going to shoot threes all day long. Uh, but Giannis belonged inside, and once once they got that going. To me, that that took over the series uh, and the championship. That, and to me, that's what did it. So it could be that you're right. It could be they want to go inside more and be able to hold their own against teams like Denver, maybe the Lakers, uh, the Clippers, who are going to sign Chris Paul, it looks like, for uh, yeah. four, to four years instead of just two. Uh, you know, uh, who knows how long he has. He might have four years. Yeah. He's got so much money, these guys. You're right. I would want to come back as an NBA player. Uh, <laughs> my luck, I'd come back as a cockroach, but still. Probably, but if I had a choice, you could be NBA player, NFL player, cockroach. <laughs> you know, cockroaches do survive. They're badass. They'll survive a nuclear war, but they won't survive a 200-pound guy stepping on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I might have to go with the NBA play. <laughs> yeah, I got to run around. But if I'm a cockroach, I got to run around every time they turn the light on, too. So, I mean, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the NBA is going to be interesting, I think, brother. I think, uh, yeah, let's face it, the East beat the West in the finals. It's been a while since that's happened. Yeah. Pretty much. Miami might have been the last one, if I remember, until now. I'm not sure about that, but um, the East is considered a mediocre division, and now the champ is from the East. You know, so and they didn't really beat anybody 4-0, I don't think. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, what teams give a shit and what teams don't. <laughs> I'm um, on the uh, fantasy basketball this year too. Are you serious? I hate you, man. <laughs> the next thing you know, you're going to tell me you won the fantasy bocce ball tournament. Or <laughs> yeah, fantasy bocce ball. I just bought a bocce ball set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. You know what surprises me in life? In life, and I guess a little bit in sports. First off, this week, I think, is it this weekend? ESPN The Ocho was on uh, for that one day or two days of, uh, a year they do it. And they have all these stupid games, you know. Uh, I can't believe they still call cornhole cornhole. Oh, yeah, it's still cornhole. I mean, it's still called cornhole. It's not beanbag throw or anything like that. It's a bocce ball. <laughs> oh, jeez. And, folks, let me tell you, bocce balls, if you ever got hit by one, which you should, because oh, yeah. <laughs> bocce ball is not the kind – you don't throw it at people. But if you ever got hit with a bocce ball, that shit would hurt. <laughs> I feel like getting hit with a heavy croquet ball. You well, know what I'm starting to look at pretty soon? Uh, Do you ever see disc golf? 
disc up. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. I, I have some discs. There's a couple of parks around here. Uh, once uh, my knees are a little bit better, uh, I'm going to give it a shot. But I just bought a set. It looks pretty cool, actually. Uh, I figured that'd be something you'd be interested in. Uh, that That's a pretty cool deal. Uh, but, yeah, I, I think the NBA is going to be interesting. I think all these things, NFL and the NBA are going to be interesting, I think. Uh, the NHL is really going to be fun to watch. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I just don't uh, – baseball, I hope they do what they say they're going to do, get rid of the seven innings, uh, get rid of uh, – uh, the double, you know, those double hitters and the man on second, uh, the seven inning double hitters are just, it's too short, you know? Yeah. When they said they had to speed up the game, I figured, well, this might be a way to, to think about doing that. And then all of a sudden, the seventh inning is there. It's like, bam. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I don't like this. I, I, don't, I don't like this at all. And then in the eighth inning, it, they would play it like the extra inning rule. Right. And I'm like, yeah. This really sucks. <laughs> yeah, it's like now. Let me ask you this: Who was it? Was it Bumgarner through the uh, seven inning uh, no hit game? No hit game. Yeah, and he does not get credit for a no hitter. Is that what they did? They say he don't get credit. He doesn't get credit for a no hitter. He gets credit for a seven inning shot. Yeah. Say so well. So what's the point? Right. Well, I mean, you still want to win the game and all that, but I mean, yeah, no, no, I'm just saying, saying no. right. But I'm saying if it's a seven inning game, then he should be credited with. They should give him the no hitter. That's right. That's and that's really what everybody says. And they're like, no, nah, we're not going to do that. And they're letting. Here's here's the part that bothers me. Who the hell made Elias Sports Bureau the people that can make these decisions? The, the Elias Sports Bureau is supposed to be keeping track of scores and statistics. That's it. But because yeah. Elias Sports Bureau said, well. Uh, uh, no hitter is nine innings, and it's in the rules. Not really, it's not. How many times I remember times when games were shortened to five or six innings, and the pitcher would get credit for a no hitter. Mm -hmm. So why is this different? It's not the pitcher's fault that it's only seven innings, right? So I, I, I really think he should have gotten a credit for a no hitter, even if you want to put an asterisk next to it. Sure, yeah. you could do that. You know. Uh, but it was it still should be in the books, I think. I, especially since he pitched for Arizona. Arizona's yeah. terrible. Arizona, they are terrible. I mean, I my team is terrible. I mean, I think nice state to I visit. Think Arizona's even worse than. Uh, they make the Orioles look good. Well, no. 38 wins. What's Arizona? Yeah, check Arizona's win total. That ought to be interesting. 34. <laughs> All right, so they're in the same ballpark, right? Oh, it's there. Oh, literally. <laughs> but, oh, man. They're bad. They're really bad. Um, there's somebody else that's really – Rockies, maybe? Right with them? Yeah, there's another – Texas Texas but, isn't but good. Baltimore is 26 games out. <laughs> <laughs> 26 games out of first place, even if they won every game the rest of the year. The Rangers are 26 games out. Okay. What are the central <laughs> – Arizona's 34 and a half games out. Well, you know what? They're screwed because they're in the same division with, like, the Giants, the Dodgers, the Dodgers, Padres. Padres, yeah. Oh, they're so screwed. They got no shot. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. <laughs> 36 games out? Yikes. <laughs> They'd have to win the rest of their games and hope every – they may already be mathematically eliminated. Uh, probably. They're probably pretty close to being – we're out of it already. <laughs> And here it is, the beginning of August. It's got to be getting close. If not, by the end of August, they will be mathematically limited. <laughs> that's just – that's awful. Um, the Royals have been actually playing a little better baseball lately. They're such a young team, and they're in such a small market. Um, but they've been at least entertaining. Like, they won today. I think it was today they won. They beat the White Sox. Do they get a good crowd or no? I don't think they get a great crowd. Uh, you know, giveaway days and stuff like that they do. But they don't really have that many stars. Um, their catcher's great, Perez. He, they've had him for a while, and he re-signed there a couple of years ago. He's really good. Um, they get a lot of young players, and then, of course, they trade them off to get more young players. You know, they kind of try to keep that cycle going. 
Uh, now, 2015, when they won the championship, you still had uh, Moustakis and you had uh, um, Hosmer. Uh, uh, Gordon hadn't retired yet. Uh, and you had some decent pitching like Duffy and all. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, and they were a gritty, hard-nosed team. Um, and that's what people around here really like. Um, uh, there's there's people that go that are kind of die hard, or at least, and there's other people that go for casual, but it's not like a packed house. Yeah. It well, would be out, if they were winning. Uh, yeah, when we when I come out, we'll, we can get good. Yeah, we'll go again because I haven't been out there yet. Uh, I'd like to go one of these days uh, to Kaufman. Supposedly, Kaufman's a beautiful stadium. So I'd like to see it. They say everybody says it's really nice. As a matter of fact, when I move, I'll even be closer to you. I think we'll be within 12 hours. Where are you going? Louisiana. Nice. Lake Charles. Oh, yeah? Cool. I think it's it's about 11 hours from you, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's that far. Um, All right. Well, we're going to get ready to roll, I think. Um, If we want to play a quick game, who do you think wins the World Series? Nobody. Dodgers. There's one team. Who do you think wins the Dodgers. World Series? Dodgers. Dodgers. Okay. Okay. Um, let me think. You might. I think Houston. They got a chip on their shoulder. They're yeah. pissed that everybody's coming after them. And, yeah. And, I, I think they want to prove yeah. that we can do this clean and quit ragging on us. We're good. I think Houston, maybe. I'm not rooting for them. <laughs> but but when I look at it logically, don't get me wrong, I think the Red Sox are playing a lot better than everybody thinks. Um, but uh, oh, we're lining up for a long field goal here, the, the Cowgirls. And it is no good, way off to the right. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, oh, that's a foul down the right field line. <laughs> T-Man could have hit that. Jeez. Shank. <laughs> Shank. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And there's a linebacker laughing. It's like, uh, I wouldn't be laughing. Well, it's exhibition. They don't care. One second left at a half, it's 3 nothing. Um, So, yeah. So, all right. So, you're on record with the Dodgers. I'm going to say Houston. I think it could be Houston and the Dodgers in the World Series. Um, but uh, don't, uh, don't count out the uh, – uh, completely count out Oakland. They surprise people, especially the second half of the season. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, for a and the White Sox, with them, they, 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 they always come – they're there every, at least every other year, every if not other every year. year. I think the White Sox and the Astros will play in the American League Championship Final. Houston will edge them, and then will edge the Dodgers in either six or seven. Uh, NFL, it's early. Who you got, buddy? Right. Oh, that's way early. I'll, we'll save that for the next show. <laughs> All right, that's true. We'll save that for the NFL show. Though I am partial to the yeah, red and yellow. Yeah, I mean. And, I, and they've improved their offensive line, and they've tried to improve the defense. If those things gel and they can keep uh, Patrick standing up, and he's 100%. I probably, I have to, I probably have to agree with you. I mean. Yeah. Though I think their toughest foes are going to be in their own division. I think San Diego is going to get better. Uh, their quarterback's great. I love it. Uh, Herbert. He's, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, he, I, I like to get him this year. That's I think I that kid is great. He's not quite Mahomes. Right. But who is? But he is great. Um, Denver, I don't think, is going to do too much. Uh, I like Oakland. If Oakland improves their defense a little bit, uh, and their offense stays pat, I think they could do some damage. The rest of the league outside of Baltimore, okay. Buffalo, Buffalo don't, I mean, with, oh, with Buffalo, that, Buffalo is pretty good. Yeah, don't count Buffalo. You're right. I won't count them out. Uh, but other than that, in the NFC, I don't really see. In the NFC, I, mean, I don't see. Tampa, Tampa I don't think probably. Green Bay is going to be good. Tampa is probably your their best. That's the team everybody's going to have to try and knock off. This Tampa. Right. So. But, but like you said, we can do some research and uh, get a little more in-depth for it when we do the football show. Uh, let me see. Hockey. You think Tampa Bay again? Tampa? No. No? You think they're out? I'll take the field on that one. Take I, the I, field. I, I, don't think, I don't think Tampa will win again. Yeah. Two in a row. 
that's lucky. Three in a row with Stanley Cup, that's that's tough. Um, yeah. I don't see it. Um, you're probably right there. Uh, let me see. I think that wraps it up. Unless uh, NBA. NBA could be tough. Yeah, that could. That could be anything. Um, I think Phoenix has something to prove. With Chris Paul, yeah, I mean, I mean they're, they're and they're young, so I mean, they're yeah, young. I mean, could be there again. It's just the bend of what the rest of the free agency is going yep. to be. It's hard what the to free agency going to do? Yeah. Uh, I hate I as much as I hate to say it. I think if the Nets are healthy, they're the team to be. Yeah, yeah, uh, no doubt they would have been there if it wasn't for the. They injuries. would have been there if it wasn't for injuries. I mean, Durant got him as far as he could by himself. Mm -hmm. Harden hurt, Irving hurt. And Durant is carrying the Olympic team, basically. Yeah, yeah. Though, though Drew Holiday is playing very well, he's playing great. Um, See, that's but, where the that's where the Sixers messed up. They should have never got rid of him. You know the guys the Sixers have given up on that are spread all around the league. Mm -hmm. Lou Williams, Drew Holiday. Uh, uh, who's I love the kid. He's hurt. I guess I guess he's going to be out for the season. Uh, oh, what the hell's his name? Oh, I could see him. Darrett? Sarich? Mm. He was with the Sixers like two years ago, three years ago. Oh, Sarich from the yeah. – yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think he's, he's been injury-prone. He's been injury-prone, but he's still a good ball player. He's a good ball player. Um, and, 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 and look, at they get rid of everybody, but they don't get rid of Simmons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think they're trying. There was some talk today that they're still trying to – they're talking to the Warriors about something. The Warriors are interested, but who knows what the Warriors are going to give up. But then again, everybody knows with Simmons, unless you think you're the guy that can teach them how to shoot, you know, and, and there are coaches out there who think they are not just in the NBA, but everywhere in, in the mm -hmm. pros and college. Well, I can take that guy and I could teach him how to, at this point in his career, I don't know if you can, uh, you know, and uh, I heard somebody say, uh, during the season when they were in the playoffs, he he doesn't want – he looked afraid to go to the basket because he looked like he was going to be fouled every time he went, yeah. and he would be afraid to go to the foul line. Yeah, because he was 3 for 14 one game. Yeah. Like, what the yeah. Yeah, they... uh, Margie says good night. Good night, Margie. Good night. Hey, Margie. We're going to get out of here too, um, but I just wanted to run a quick scenario by Billy. Who's going to win? Holy moly, Bill. <laughs> If we're going to predict all the sports, let's predict all the sports. Let's go for the boxing ball championship fight. <laughs> I can see Billy. Who's going to win? I tell you what, speaking of, I, I watched the cornhole on ESPN, man. And I tell you what, there's the they just, just throw it. They, they just throw it right in. What the hell? It's like 20, the, the one girl I saw was 22 in a row. I was like, holy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'd have to see Seth Curry learn how to play cornhole. Could you oh, imagine? It's, it's 27 feet away, but it's like yeah. everyone is like. And, they, and they're not scooting up. They're dropping right in the hole. They're just <laughs> dropping right in. It's like they got the arc perfect. Yeah, boom. Boom. What the up. freak? That's nuts. Uh, that's, oh, well. that's phenomenal. That's, that's, you know what? Give them credit. Give them credit because even though you may not, some people may not consider that a sport, it's definitely a skill set. Oh yeah, you I mean, teach yourself. You know what? Think about it. It's just like bowling. I mean, if you, you know, if you get if you play enough times, you're, you're, you're going to learn how to do it. Right? You're going to do it. Horseshoes, yeah. the same thing. I horseshoes, mean, I'm getting older. Horseshoes are a little yeah. harder to throw now, but but yeah. you know, the cornhole's nice. It's just like, mm. yeah, that's true. It's great and it's fun. It's fun, but it's cool to watch these guys because talk about competitors. Wow. Yeah. But the, I always my my whole thought, Bill, was. Cornhole should be the next sport for guys who guys who retire, retire. Which way is my hand? Here it is. Retire from uh, beer league softball. Yeah. So we don't have to DH even and run around the bases anymore. We can just throw this thing. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember pinch running for you a few times. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I remember being in a league, Bill, that all I had to do was get on, and I was done. That was it. I I would literally look around like who's coming in. <laughs> One league in Massachusetts that I played in made a rule 
because there was another guy on one other team that was in the same boat because we were both like the two oldest guys in the league, I think, back then. Mm -hmm. And then I still played out here my last time that I lived here. Um, but it was like we could I, – I was really hitting the ball, especially left-handed. I really started hitting the ball left-handed. They put a shift on for me. I beat the shift every time. Still pulling the ball. It was like nobody wanted to catch it. I was hitting line shots, right? And uh, it was so funny. They put a league rule in that we had to at least get to first base because I guess the other guy hit the ball one time, and because they had the rule that said you could have a courtesy runner, the umpire didn't know how to read courtesy runner and let a runner, you know, like you see in just pickup game, beer league yeah. game, no, not league, just beer games in the backyard or whatever. Let a guy stand here. When he hit the ball, that guy ran for him. <laughs> he actually had to put a rule in uh, that said, no, the, the hitter's got to at least reach first base before a runner can go in. So then what that team did was the guy would reach first base, and that runner was waiting in first base. So if he hit a ball in the gap or hit a ball you know, down the line or something, that guy would take over at first base and run the run. So then they had to put it in there that oh, man. The, the hitter has to go as far as he can, and then when the play is dead, dead then dead, you get a courtesy run. <laughs> it's like they were twisting the rule every time. They tried it once on us, but uh, then uh, our coach came over to me and go, Johnny, we're going to do the same thing to you. <laughs> and he let their catcher hear it, like, you know, because I was hitting a ton and they knew it. Um, so I came up with the bases loaded and uh, they put the shift on for me. And I hit one ball off the fence. I got the first base and then a runner took over and ran. And they're screaming, he can't do that. He can't do that. And our coach was just like, you mean like your guy couldn't do it last inning? <laughs> and the umpire was like, you open the door, it's going to happen. And it was like, because nobody else ever did that. It never challenged him, never did anything, and nobody else hit it like that. Nobody else ever tried to use the rule against him. So that when we did it, and all three runners scored, and the guy running for me took over at first, and he got – it was like I hit a triple. <laughs> it was like in the scorebook, I hit a triple. <laughs> I'm waddling the first, limping on both legs. I'm like, holy cow. It was so much fun. It was it was great just to see all their faces. And what were they going to do, argue? You know what would happen. I'd go over with one bat and take all 12 people. <laughs> like, I haven't done that before. <laughs> it's like, did that before? Anybody want to say anything? <laughs> huh? Okay. Uh, hey, uh, next time, you want to do your job? <laughs> Don't make me go over and do your job for you. <laughs> Idiots. <laughs> but they had pretty shirts. <laughs> Idiots. So, All right, let's get out of here. Enough reminiscing and enough stuff. All here. right, brother. Uh, so uh, with you. I'll uh, get a hold of you. We'll pick the next date. We'll post it and advertise it for all you folks. Uh, we're This is going to be on YouTube. We're going to put it on a few other places. Hopefully you guys will watch and we'll see. Uh, Billy, thanks. It's been showtime right here. Uh, showtime with John Harrison tonight. Billy Smith, my special guest. And a pleasure, man. We'll be quite a few times at least. So you guys have a great night. We will talk to you soon. Enjoy the Hall of Fame game that's on now and the rest of the Olympics and uh, some Major League Baseball. We'll see you soon. Good night, folks. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.